Hello everyone, my name is Boulevard, and as promised, here is part two of the Mastering Runeterra Tryhards versus Targon's Valley VOD review. Uh, as we can see here, we do have a little bit of a unique deck in the Jax Orn this time around, but it's still a deck that people are kind of aware of, so we're going to skip the deck list, and if something comes up, I'll, throw, I'll call it out, but let's jump straight into the games this time around. All right, I just wanted to highlight that it wasn't me that got you into the game late, it was the stream, okay? Boulevard's not out here skipping turns, but... I forgot to open Epic Pen. That I did forget to do. So currently, as it stands, Dragon Guy Who Died is the last player for Targon's Valley. Prodigy, if they lose here, I believe they toss it over to Kevor, so might still have a bit of game to play. But it looks like we've got Echo Jinx versus Nasus. Again, I want to see... I want to see some aggro out of Dragon Guy. I've been talking a lot about how the way that Echo Jinx gets away with a lot more than it should is players paying way too much respect to it. But I don't know how much of this is actually going to be in the hands of Dragon Guy. Prodigy, you know, like has the Aftershock for the Vaults of Helia, should that come up? Has the Voices Echo combo. There's a Vengeance, there's an SI Telestone. Like the removal is available for Dragon Guy. So what you would like to see out of this player is proactive removal strategies onto the heavy hitters. You know, saying, okay, if you have a chrono break to revive one guy, that's the lowest value chrono break you could possibly have. And you do eventually have to give your opponent chrono break value. If they draw it and they have it, eventually they're going to get value out of it. Whether it's good value, bad value, they're going to get value. You can't avoid it forever. And it feels like players are consistently bending over backwards to try and counter this deck in a way that it, it just cannot be countered. They're, they're just playing against it incorrectly, even at high levels. And I'd like to see some adjustment to that. You know, community-wide adjustment to that. Everybody everybody, get on board. Ignore that, uh, that little blip there. <laughs> All right, I was about to say, I'm about to start fast-forwarding when some of these players are sitting here taking 15 seconds to think about nothing. I'm not having it. I mean, this is all all pretty cut and dry so far, right? Like, Soul Harvest got used because it doesn't hit any of the prime targets. Voices, unfortunately, is always going to be outside the range of it because once Voices comes down, you assume that they're leveled, so they actually have 5 attack. Keeping up Vengeance mana like that... Not finding much. The trades look really good here, though. And this is a great... Yeah, I, I think that's why Prodigy's not setting in the board. It's good for Prodigy to hold it back, understanding that, like, no need to get jumpy with this. You need to save these for a Voices Chrono Break turn. And now, from here on out, it does feel a little out of Dragon Guy's hands. Prodigy just, like, has such a wide board, has the Voices. As soon as they find Chrono Break, it's kind of over. What Dragon Guy does have, though, is Nasus. And currently... That's not something you can just kind of, like, sit around and ignore forever. And if you try to, then Dragon Guy kind of just gets to pick apart your board. For example, like, if Prodigy runs this out in response to the Nasus, uh, you know, it's not the most ideal use of your Nasus to kind of just sit here and run it into... Okay, I didn't like that. I didn't like that. I would have liked to see... Well, how small is Nasus, actually? Because if Nasus is only, like a 4-4 four, four or something. I can kind of see saving the crumble for the voices and having the read that your opponent has it, but I would need to know how big the Nasus is to figure out if I really like this play. I think the Nasus is small enough that I like hanging on to the crumble, leaving that open. Good good play by Dragon. But if the Nasus is like putting your opponent on a two-turn clock, I, I would have liked to have seen an attempt there. All right, so Vaults of Helia just isn't resolving for the remainder of the game is what I'm getting at here. Or what I'm gathering here. But now, Dragon, because they got off the crumble, found a situation where their opponent still hasn't been able to chrono break. Now Jinx is sort of like the only heavy hitter that's going to be left for Prodigy. So, rather than playing aggressively with their units, Dragon's playing aggressively with their removal. Which, as long as you are playing aggressively in some sense, be it a proactive attempt on your opponent's life total or a proactive attempt on your opponent's board state, either one is fine by me. You can do either one, but you have to do one of those things. You can't sit here and try to float your opponent for mana and take passes. So the Nasus would have been a 6-6 six, six because you got two kills off Crumble. 6-6 six, 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 Nasus is kind of like the bar where I was like, I don't know if that's worth it. Um, because 7 attack Nasus, I think you can reasonably put your opponent on a 2-turn clock if they didn't have specifically Voice of the Risen there. 
because the only fearsome blockers that are available to prodigy are like jinx echo voices right so if your opponent doesn't have voices and nasus can get in for seven then it's likely you're going to be able to get in for eight on the next attack and actually present lethal or force them to block with a jinx or an echo one of those two now we're getting again just more proactive removal out of dragon guy uh not holding up the vengeance going for a nasus strike spell onto the jinx i really like the way dragon is playing this matchup and just really just jamming it into this deck And even if Prodigy had a Chrono Break here, like a Jinx comes back, you still have to empty your hand. Yeah, like Chrono Break's available, you take it because what else are you going to do? But there's really not a lot of value coming out of Prodigy here, right? Even though you're getting some decent trades, you are just eating 11 damage off the Nasus. Yeah, going to... Okay, I was about to say. I don't know if you can actually... Uh, not like you can't not block here because if you would go to one dragon guy can like proactively uh sack one of their units to right of negation to pump nasus up to 12 and actually end the game oh never mind that wouldn't have worked because you were already slant units actually would have would have worked just couldn't do it on the five five would have had to do it on the two two because the five five was slaying a unit so yeah could have sacked the two three to right of negation to try and get that extra point through so good on prodigy to line up blocks in a way that they don't die but like now jinx is down you can chrono break you get a second jinx but i don't think you can ever get two rockets off jinx and actually yeah now the right gets to come out to just stop that entirely and that is a total disaster i'm gonna go ahead and fast forward to the end here that one feels over yeah i was about to say like it looks like a lot happens but really it's just like prodigy trying to do what they can on their turn which is nothing and then eventually we get a victory out of dragon guy and i really do want to highlight what i feel like were the most important plays here the first one being like it seems kind of innocuous is innocuous even the right word? I've been trying to expand my vocabulary, and I feel like uh, sometimes I just use big words and I don't even use them right. Like the vengeance onto the echo here, right? It, it feels like there was really no other play this turn because the hand was so heavy. So it almost feels like they had to do this, but still, you know, good on them for doing it anyway, because sometimes it feels like these players get backed into a corner and they only have one play, and they try so hard to find any other play than the obvious one that they just, like, psych themselves out. What I really want to point out, though, was the crumble here. This crumble was absolutely, absolutely insane from Dragon Guy. 100% the correct play. And initially, I was critical of attacking with the 5-5, five five, but... It was important to do that to be able to float mana and still pass back to Prodigy. And Dragon Guy kind of had a read that there was a Voices because, one, the only way you really lose is Voices, so you should probably play like your opponent has a Voices. But also on this previous turn, when Prodigy only attacked with the Echo, instead of going for... Like, the attacks don't look great here from Prodigy one way or another. It probably seems like they're really only going to go in with the Echo anyway, so this doesn't necessarily give you the read that your opponent has Voices, but you should know from this... Uh, sort of board state that the only way your opponent is ever coming back into the game is with voices and so play around it accordingly um which like jamming the nasus it gets punished it's not like a game ending punish if you run out the nasus here i think on on the following turn rather um yeah here we go on on dragon guy's sixth turn like if instead of saving the crumble you do just run out the nasus and i think we determined this was a six six nasus um, your opponent plays out voices, it's a 5-4, you send in your 5-5, five, five. you might even send in, like, everything. You might send in your, uh, it gets a little awkward because they have a 3-3 three, three and a 5-4, but then, like, how much value are they getting out of these? It would be ballsy to send in everything but the rock bear shepherd and the nasus and the best value prodigy gets out of that is like takes the chump here takes the chump here and then maybe even just like eats the 11 damage goes down to nine 
and now Dragon Guy has less blockers for the crackback, which would currently be representing 3, 7, 11, 15, 20. Yeah, lethal damage on the side of Prodigy. Uh, and that's before we even get into talks of Mystic Shots and Get Excited, because at the moment, Dragon Guy doesn't have that right of negation. So, yeah, probably wouldn't have been able to full send much of an attack if you just go in with Rock Bear and Nasus, which is probably what you would have had to do if you did run out the Nasus. Then you just uh, probably, again, you probably just like take the dip. And then your opponent's at nine, and that's pretty cool. But they also have this massive board. They're digging towards that Chrono Break. And then if they do find the Chrono Break, um, I don't think you can really have... It doesn't really feel like you have control over whether or not you get your Nasus in from that point forward. Because if they take the damage and they go down to 9, best case scenario for Dragon Guy is that they are then able to crumble next turn to take out the Voices. Probably post-combat. So they're eating a lot of damage for their trouble. Depending on how much they want to trade down and that, you know, Dragon Guy's got a block with like Chrono Break in mind, so I'm not even going to get into the math of that. Um, but I did want to point out that like playing aggressively with your spells as opposed to your units, sometimes correct. I feel like I initially kind of called that like it was a mistake. And I want to point out that Dragon Guy 100% made the correct line here. Uh, because if there was no voices from Prodigy, like let's say the Nasus actually did get through uncontested, right? Then the 5-5 five five doesn't get through. Right? Like, Prodigy's just going to chump block that with this. They're down to 14. Right? It doesn't really... It's not as advantageous a position as you would really want. So, good on Dragon Guy. Let's get into game two. Jax Orn is a... It's something, man. I'm looking at this deck list. I'm not even sure what I'm supposed to be looking for. Wild Claw's Ferocity is kind of wild. Christ. You ever say a pun... That you didn't mean to be a pun, you find out after the fact and it was on accident, you feel real bad about it. That's that's what just happened to me. I don't even know the name of this card. I'm gonna call her grandma. Her real name is her government name is Favored Artisan. The word favored looked really fake to me for some reason. I was like, that's not a real word. Prodigy gonna swap over to the Nasus. That a main deck sharesies? It is. Goddamn, Dragon Guy. Goddamn. I mean, this hand looks like ass for Prodigy. I'm looking at the potential... Uh, sort of cards that can get hit by Rite of Negation, and we're looking at, like, Fish Fight, Entomb off of Three Sisters, which is not irrelevant. And then, um... Like, Orn Spell? What does Orn do again? <laughs> Hold on. Because Orn, like, level 2 Orn, like, makes a spell or just summons a ram. I don't think it's actually a spell. I think you just, like, summon a ram when you attack. So drawing the double right might even just be, like, enough of a death sentence here for Prodigy, given how efficiently Dragon Guy is tempoing out. Second Soul Harvest does kind of suck, though. Like, Prodigy, <sighs> I don't even want to say stabilizing. Their Nasus is kind of getting up there. And they've got protection for said Nasus. Double Soul Harvest might have been enough to, like, hold it down and keep Prodigy in this one. Rekindler's a, an awful top deck, a terrible top deck. This is the turn where things start to amp up, though. What kind of weapon can you roll on this combat cook? Because if it is an uncycled rake, that might be enough. That said, Prodigy did just potentially grab Quietus? So we'll have to see how that goes. But it feels like a big swing could happen here, depending on what comes off this combat cook. It doesn't even have to be Scout Weapon. Even Fearsome Weapon here pushes a lot of damage because of how much forging is available. Oh, and we're husking. We're husking it up. The husk also matters. If it's like challenger, uh yeah, spell shield. Not great in this particular instance. And it looks like it was a fearsome weapon that was grabbed. So now Prodigy's about to just eat ten, potentially eleven on the open. 
getting units out of eight spike range. Don't don't hate that. And it was the quietest that was taken. Taking 11 before you can get down the Nasus is a lot, though. Luck now the Spell Shield, like, is kind of relevant. It is... <laughs> I want to say it is and it isn't. I think it more isn't, just because you might look at this and go, oh, well, like, now they can't fish fight it, but, like, they couldn't fish fight it anyway, because anyway, it's going to go up to 7 HP because of the Husk ability. And now Quietus is going to take away that weapon, and all of a sudden... We're at a bit of a turning point here. Oh, I'm gonna steal the weapon. That Sherzies might have been enough for Dragon Guy to get lethal. I don't know if the Bakai is even active. I think Dragon Guy has only slain three units. It was like Soul Harvest, Soul Harvest, and then Hate Spike on their own guy. So, might not even have it. If the Bakai is active. And it's not. Okay. Now, Fish Fight just gets to take out the Bakai. This has to get hit with the Rite of Negation solely because your chances of finding a good target with this card are. Uh, pretty much non-existent at this point, but you also have to sack a mana crystal because you need all the blockers. Yeah, this is um, it's pretty rough for Prodigy. It was it was like looking okay, and then Dragon Guy goes and top decks another six attack unit. <laughs> Fish fight attempt number two, and this one Prodigy. It doesn't really matter if they write because they can't write and get down their blocker. Oh, the lore. Ooh, the ferocity. That should do it, actually. Um, Dragon Guy can just ferocity here. A little surprised not to see this, like, take the 2-2 and ferocity. Or if you want to be, like, really... Uh, it's it's not super safe to, like, ferocity and pull Nasus because they could have a uh, hate spike or something and, like, get the Nasus up to a 7-8 and outside the range of the Wild Claw. Okay, go in here. I mean, we're looking at lethal, and there's seemingly nothing. Yeah, nothing Prodigy can do about that one. It looks like we've got <laughs> uh, one of the quickest sets imaginable here. Oh, does find the out, actually. Well, I say out, but you've lost your Nasus. You can rekindle her into one, but your Nasus isn't representing lethal, and then Dragon Guy just gets to throw down a Naka. Also has Fish Fight to still take out one of these guys. You can't even, like, attack with these now because there's, like, a 6-6 six, six and a 6-8, so you're not getting Nasus any bigger. This should just still be lethal on Dragon Guy's next turn. Um, yeah, might as well fish fight. You know your opponent's even out of right of negations at this point. And it's one of those things where like you just drew two copies of it, and it's really hard to get impactful value out of right of negation in this matchup. Like, yeah, you managed to use both of them. You got some amount of value, but it wasn't impactful value. And so Dragon Guy is going to just take it home. Anaka into Anaka. Into the Piltovan Castaway, who grabs the upcycled rake. Yeah, that will do it. Uh, and we are now down to Kevor versus Dragon Guy, so this should be the last series. Okay, I need to pull up decks real quick. We're, okay. Samirif is still banned. That's great. And then it's Shen, Jarvan, and Samira Seraphine for Kevor. Conceptually, Samira Seraphine is so weird to me because it feels like there's a lot of times where uh, you'll get a deck that has two engines that don't really seem to have a lot of overlap, and sometimes that works out really well and sometimes it doesn't. And I will say, there have been a lot of times where it did work out and I felt like it shouldn't have. Um, Nora, Nora Swain is a good example of that, where I, I looked at those two engines and I was like, this should not be working as well as it is. 
but Samira Seraphine, I get a little bit more. Um, and probably tomorrow, I'm going to be really sort of exploring what we should be expecting out of, like, Day 1 Eternal stuff. Um, you know, questions like, what's the best Ser uh, Samira deck? Is there still a good Karma deck? Because uh, I don't think it's a hot take, but I think, like, Ezreal is kind of a bait with Karma. Uh, set just offers way too much mid-game stabilization, but you also need Karma to end the game. But that's a, that's a video for tomorrow. For now, we're going to look at Nasus versus Shen Jarvan. I believe this is pretty Nasus favored. I think Shen Jarvan really struggles to get over top of them. But you hear me dragging out my words because I'm going to check on that real quick. Shen Jarvan into Nasus. It is a 43% win rate for Shen Jarvan. That is what I thought. Uh, at Like right before the WCQ, I was like playing ladder to try to learn some of the decks and I was just like jamming a lot of Shen Jarvan to figure out its matchups and Nasus felt really bad. A big part of it being that you don't have any landmark removal. And while we've seen a little bit of Nasus today, we haven't seen Vaults of Helia do much work, which you are now about to see. And this is actually a curve that Mo was talking to me about, where you uh you don't play the clockling on one, you play it on two so that it gets the countdown from Rock Bear Shepherd. And then because Vaults of Helia goes to the right you immediately get a Nasus on 5, because this'll pop your 5-5. Five, five. Assuming Vaults is start of round? I think Vaults is start of round. We're about to find out. I could look it up, but I'm not going to. Okay, that's what I thought. Vaults is start of round, so you get to turn 5 Nasus. And that's just, like, such a... such a big thing to try and overcome. Kevor has an option here with Screeching Dragon plus form up. It is a very aggressive prospect, but when you're in a losing matchup like this, you kind of have to take the plays that don't really make sense. Because if you only make the plays that make sense, you're probably not winning. Now it gets really dicey, though. Because if Dragon Guy has a Glimpse Beyond or a... Is Glimpse Beyond even fucking legal? Glimpse Beyond might have rotated. I might be making that up. Hate Spike, anyway. I know there's a two-mana sack card in Shadow Isle. If they have Hate Spike, then suddenly Nasus is up to a 7-7. Seven, seven, and you are not actually killing that with your Screeching Dragon anymore. Which is a huge issue. Um, and you do... Almost certainly lose the game as Kevor if you form up, send it, and there's a hate spike. But if you don't send it, then next turn, Nasus goes up to a 7 7 out of a Rekindler anyway. You kind of take a turn off. Like, you're not getting down Shen Boat for another turn at least. It, it's very all in. But I think because the Vault's train is already going, uh, you absolutely have to make this play because you're not outlasting it. And that's a good read on the side of Kevor to understand the situation and go, hey, you know, like, it looks funky. Yes, it loses to Hate Spike, but if they... Like, I can't do nothing. I can't let Nasus get another go around. Unfortunately, Bakai is going to turn into Nasus anyway. And now it's a very big Nasus. But at least you got the Bakai out of your opponent's hand. You tell yourself, you know, small victories. Not really how these things work out. And now with Vengeance as a potential grab from Dragon Guy, maybe it's Hate Spike. I don't think it's super relevant at this stage. Um, yeah, because Kevor... Okay, it takes, takes the pretty non-committal development. And Dragon just not even going to combat. Saying, I don't need to run into another form up. I can let this Nasus die, get into the death pool, get the Rekindlers going. Get it up to an 8 8 to avoid the next concert, or uh, like another form up. And as cool as the Shen boat is, it's not enough. Not from this position. This matchup really feels so, so dire as soon as Vaults of Helia comes down. 
This card. Uh, I know people have been, like, waiting for it to be good for a long time, and you, you finally get it. And it looks cool. It's a cool strategy. I really like the Vault of Helia in the Nasus deck. Yeah, now you can, like, trade your Screeching Dragon for Nasus, or at least make an attempt to. Dragon Guy's not even going to let you have that. Although, this is open decklist, there is a prismatic barrier, that is something Dragon has to be cognizant of, but there's really no play around it, right? This thing has Challenger, so Dragon kind of just gets to get traded on. Not that it really matters, because there's another Nasus in hand, and this Rekindler is about to upgrade into a uh, Big Boat. Not Big Boat. Big Fish. Terror of the Tides. Actually, it looks like a boat. So yeah, Big Boat. And thus, we're actually just going to get a takedown onto the Rekindler rather than... Uh, nope, okay, it is going to be the kill onto the Nasus. The kill, again, like you lose to Hate Spike here uh, because it'll take away the barrier and thus the double attack. But again, you just don't really have a choice. Kevor is kind of trying to figure out right now, do I have a choice? If you take out the Rekindler to deny the Terror of the Tides and, like, Nasus goes down, another Rekindler comes out, the Nasus is a 10-10, so it'll level. This way, Dragon Guy is not eating, or Kevor, rather, is, is not eating an absolute shit ton of damage next turn from the Boat plus Nasus combo, because Dragon Guy probably would just run out third Nasus from hand, Gets the defensive prismatic barrier, but how much does it really matter? In the face of second vengeance from Dragon Guy, I'm willing to say, like, not at all. And because what we're looking for in VOD reviews is, like, interesting forks and decision patterns, uh, I think I am just going to fast forward to the end here. Okay, so what I what I attempted to do was um, fast forward to the end of the game, because it looks very over, right? Like, Dragon Guy has the 10-10 the Nasus. It should be over from here. Um, so I fast forwarded to the end because I was like, we're probably out of interesting decisions that are going to be made between now and the end of the game. And when I fast forwarded, I saw that that is not the case. So I'm going to let this one play out, uh, as we try and get to those interesting decisions to talk about. Even here, you've got the form up on the Shen boat to try and trade the Nasus. This is Rekindler number two. This is Nasus number two. So your opponent is only gonna be at two nasus left you can also trade onto the rekindler ah the sort the sort of awkward part is that if you do want to try and take out the nasus with the form up uh one you can't block anything else because then trades happen and the nasus goes to an 11 11 and it's just too big the other issue is that uh a vengeance in hand from dragon guy would even deny that kind of play from here, Kevor still can deny the level up with Prismatic Barrier. And that's... That ain't bad. But actually, just gonna eat 15 is Kevor. I think I've been... I think I've been calling both players Dragon Guy. I apologize. Alright, we can skip that a little bit. <laughs> Don't need to let that play out. 